Have you been told your creatinine levels are creeping up? Worried about your kidneys getting weaker over time? Did you know the type of protein you eat can either protect your kidneys or push them closer to damage? High creatinine is a sign your kidneys are under stress. But here's the secret. Your kidneys don't just fear protein. They fear the wrong kind of protein. Choosing the right sources reduces the workload on your kidneys preserves filtration, and can even slow down chronic kidney damage. This is called renal protein management, carefully choosing low metabolic burden proteins that support repair instead of causing toxic buildup. As a doctor working with kidney patients for 15 years, I've seen people improve their labs simply by swapping harmful proteins for renal-friendly ones without cutting protein completely. Today, I'll show you four proteins that heal your kidneys and four that silently worsen them. And trust me, you'll be shocked by the second one on the harmful list. Stay till the end for a bonus habit that supercharges kidney protection beyond diet. We're starting with the most kidney-friendly, low-burden plant protein that even helps lower creatinine. Let's begin with tofu and soy products. Tofu and soy products are some of the best alternatives to heavy animal proteins when you want to protect kidney function. Soy protein produces less nitrogenous waste compared to meat, which means your kidneys don't have to work as hard to clear metabolic byproducts. When your nephrons, the microscopic filters in your kidneys, are already under strain, reducing that workload can slow down the progression of damage. Soy also contains natural compounds called isoflavones, which act as mild anti-inflammatory agents. Inflammation is one of the silent drivers of worsening creatinine levels because it damages kidney tissue over time. By calming that response, soy gives your kidneys a chance to stabilize. Another big plus is its lower phosphorus and sodium load compared to animal proteins. High phosphorus accelerates mineral imbalances in kidney disease, leading to weak bones and vascular issues, while too much sodium raises blood pressure, a major enemy of kidney health. Cleveland Clinic researchers even found that people who swapped red meat for soy protein improved their kidney filtration markers in the early stages of kidney disease. Isn't it amazing how one small change can have measurable effects? So, what is a safe portion? About half a cup of firm tofu or one cup of unsweetened soy milk a day is enough to give you protein support without overloading the system. The best way to enjoy it is lightly steamed or baked with fresh herbs, avoiding deep-fried versions that add unhealthy fats. Fermented soy, like tempeh, is another great option because it is easier to digest and the fermentation process helps reduce certain compounds that might irritate digestion. When buying, always look for organic, non-genetically modified tofu or plain soy milk with no added sugars or sodium. Next, let's move to two humble legumes that provide steady protein without burdening your kidneys, lentils, and chickpeas. Before we move on, where are you watching from? And are you trying to lower creatinine naturally? Subscribe to Know How and turn on the bell so you don't miss more tips. If this helps you, type 1 in the comments or 0 if it doesn't. Lentils and chickpeas are some of the most kidney-friendly plant proteins you can include in your diet. They provide about 15 grams of high-quality protein per cooked cup, but with a much lower acid load than animal proteins. Why does that matter? Because a high acid load in the diet forces your kidneys to work overtime to maintain pH balance, and over time, that acid stress contributes to further damage. Lentils and chickpeas are also rich in soluble fiber, which binds to toxins in the gut, reducing the buildup of uremic toxins that contribute to high creatinine levels. Another hidden benefit is their magnesium and folate content, which supports healthy renal blood vessels and reduces oxidative stress that inflames kidney tissues. Research from Johns Hopkins on kidney health showed that including legumes in the diet lowered kidney inflammation and improved metabolic markers in patients with mild chronic kidney disease. Isn't it surprising that something as simple as a bowl of lentil soup can help calm inflammation that directly affects your kidneys? For an ideal portion, 
half a cup of cooked lentils or chickpeas daily works well. If you have advanced kidney disease and need to control potassium, soaking them overnight helps reduce the potassium content significantly. For a simple and safe recipe, a lentil soup with parsley and a drizzle of olive oil is both low in sodium and rich in antioxidants that support kidney tissue. When shopping, prefer dried lentils or chickpeas you can soak yourself. If you buy canned versions, always go for low sodium and BPA-free options, and make sure to rinse them thoroughly under running water to wash away excess sodium. One mistake I often see is patients eating very large portions without controlling for potassium, which can become risky for advanced stages of kidney disease. Another is using salty canned beans without rinsing, which just adds unnecessary sodium that raises blood pressure and indirectly harms kidney filtration. Now, let's look at an ancient seed that is technically a pseudo-grain, but provides a complete protein with minimal kidney stress, quinoa. Quinoa is unique because it is one of the few plant foods that is a complete protein, meaning it contains all nine essential amino acids. Yet it is very low in purines, the compounds that break down into uric acid and burden your kidneys. It is also naturally alkalizing, which helps reduce the acid load in your diet, a critical factor for people trying to protect kidney health. The magnesium and antioxidants in quinoa support the health of your nephrons, those delicate kidney filters that struggle under constant acid or toxin exposure. Harvard School of Public Health even highlighted quinoa as a food that lowers dietary acid load, which translates to improved renal outcomes over time. A safe portion is about half a cup of cooked quinoa as a side dish or meal base. A simple quinoa salad with cucumber and a drizzle of olive oil makes a refreshing, kidney-friendly lunch without adding strain. When buying quinoa, always rinse it thoroughly before cooking to remove natural saponins, which can irritate digestion. Avoid boxed quinoa mixes with seasoning packets, as those often contain hidden sodium. Our last healing protein comes in small packages, healthy fats and amino acids rolled into crunchy bites. Let's talk nuts and seeds in moderation. Nuts and seeds can be very beneficial for your kidneys if eaten in controlled portions. They provide plant-based amino acids along with healthy fats that don't create the same renal burden as heavy animal fats. Almonds, walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds contain arginine and omega-3 fatty acids that help support kidney blood flow and reduce systemic inflammation. Almonds and flax seeds in particular are known to reduce oxidative stress in kidneys, which is one of the drivers of worsening chronic kidney disease. Stanford University researchers showed that moderate nut intake reduced inflammation in patients with early kidney disease, which in turn helped slow down the progression of damage. But portion size matters a lot here. A small handful, about a quarter cup daily, is enough to get the benefits without overloading on phosphorus or potassium. Always choose raw or lightly roasted unsalted nuts, avoiding salted or candied versions that sneak in sodium and sugar. Also avoid nut butters with hydrogenated oils or added sweeteners, as they can quietly harm kidney health over time. Finding this helpful? Hit the like button. It tells YouTube this topic matters and helps know-how reach more people who need kidney support. We've covered the four best kidney healing proteins tofu and soy products, lentils and chickpeas, quinoa and nuts and seeds. But now, let's flip the coin. Here are four proteins that secretly worsen your kidney health. First up is the biggest culprit, red and processed meats. Red and processed meats are among the harshest proteins for damaged kidneys because they create a heavy metabolic load. They are high in saturated fats and advanced glycation end products, which trigger inflammation in kidney tissues. When kidney cells are inflamed, their ability to filter waste declines, causing creatinine to rise. These meats also produce large amounts of nitrogenous waste when metabolized, so the kidneys have to work harder to clear it. That constant workload accelerates kidney stress and speeds up the decline in filtration rates 
processed meats like bacon, sausages, and deli slices are even worse because they contain excess sodium and preservatives. Sodium raises blood pressure, which further damages fragile kidney blood vessels, while preservatives add an extra toxin load that the kidneys must filter. The National Kidney Foundation has reported that diets high in red meat accelerate chronic kidney disease progression compared to diets lower in animal proteins. Even small amounts can be risky. Regularly eating just 3 to 4 ounces of processed meat daily can worsen kidney markers over time, especially if your kidneys are already struggling. Next, let's turn our attention to something many see as comforting, but it quietly strains kidney function. High-fat dairy. Whole milk, cream, cheese, and other high-fat dairy products may seem harmless, but they are loaded with excess phosphorus and saturated fats. Phosphorus is a mineral that becomes difficult for weak kidneys to excrete, so it builds up in the blood. High phosphorus levels pull calcium from your bones and cause calcification in soft tissues, including the kidneys themselves, which reduces their ability to filter waste effectively. Saturated fats in dairy also contribute to vascular damage, narrowing the tiny renal arteries and making it harder for kidneys to receive proper blood flow. Over time, this poor circulation worsens kidney filtration rates. The University of Wisconsin Nephrology Department studied high dairy diets and found they were linked to faster declines in kidney filtration, especially in people with early kidney disease. So what amount becomes risky? Regular intake of whole milk, cheeses, or creams over weeks and months can quietly worsen creatinine levels, even if your portion sizes are not huge. One mistake many make is adding cheese to meals multiple times a day, thinking it is just a little extra flavor, but it accumulates hidden phosphorus and sodium. If you are trying to protect your kidneys, switching to lower phosphorus plant alternatives is a much safer choice. Now let's shift our focus to the sea and look more closely at a surprising protein problem, purin-rich fish like tuna and sardines. Tuna, sardines, and other similar fish are rich in purines. Purines are compounds that break down into uric acid during digestion, and excess uric acid places extra strain on kidneys that are already filtering poorly. When uric acid levels climb, it can lead to gout attacks, kidney stones, and more inflammation within the renal system. These fish are also often canned with salt and preservatives, creating a double burden of sodium and chemical additives that damaged kidneys cannot handle well. The Mayo Clinic Nephrology Division has warned that high purine seafood can worsen kidney filtration over time, especially when eaten regularly. It does not take much to cause trouble. Even two servings of sardines or tuna a week can raise uric acid levels in chronic kidney disease patients. I have seen patients who thought they were eating healthy by swapping red meat for canned tuna, but their creatinine continued to rise because they were unknowingly adding purine stress. If you enjoy fish, it is better to choose low purine varieties in small amounts rather than frequently relying on tuna or sardines. And finally, let's discuss a modern trend that silently overloads your kidney, protein powders and creatine supplements. High-protein shakes and creatine powders might be popular in fitness circles, but they are among the worst for weak kidneys. These products flood the body with concentrated protein, forcing your kidneys to work overtime to clear the nitrogen waste produced when protein breaks down. That extra workload causes creatinine to rise faster than it would with natural food sources. Creatine supplements make things even more confusing because they can falsely elevate creatinine readings, making it harder to track true kidney function. Johns Hopkins renal research has shown that high-protein bodybuilding diets accelerate kidney function decline, especially in those who already have reduced filtration. Even one or two shakes daily can be risky if you have kidney disease or borderline kidney function. Over time, this excess protein load leads to higher waste accumulation and quicker damage to the delicate nephrons.
From what I have seen, many patients who were otherwise stable started showing kidney stress after adopting protein shakes as a meal replacement. If you are trying to protect your kidneys, it is far better to rely on balanced whole foods rather than supplements. Are you currently using protein powders or creatine for fitness or diet reasons? I would like to hear if you think they are helping or hurting because this is one of the most misunderstood topics in kidney care. There is one more daily habit that can help your kidneys filter better and keep creatinine more stable. Let's get into this simple yet powerful bonus tip. Gentle hydration cycling is a small change with big effects on kidney function. Instead of drinking large amounts of water at once, taking small sips every hour helps your kidneys stay hydrated and flush toxins without feeling overwhelmed. When you chug a lot of water at once, weak kidneys cannot handle the sudden fluid load, which may actually increase stress. But by spreading out hydration, you support steady kidney perfusion and toxin removal throughout the day. This method also prevents dehydration spikes, which are known to cause temporary creatinine rises. The nephrology team at Cleveland Clinic has confirmed that proper hydration can slow the progression of chronic kidney disease by reducing episodes of concentrated urine that stress the kidneys. So, how can you do it? Sip about 4 to 6 ounces of water every hour, keeping it gentle and steady. You can include herbal teas like nettle or chamomile, which provide extra soothing effects on kidney tissue and reduce mild inflammation. I have guided many patients to adopt hydration cycling, and over several weeks their creatinine fluctuations reduced noticeably. It seems like such a small habit, but the kidneys respond well to this consistent support. So, here is a quick recap before we wrap up. Kidney-friendly proteins include tofu and soy, lentils and chickpeas, quinoa, and moderate amounts of nuts and seeds. Harmful proteins that increase kidney stress include red and processed meats, high-fat dairy, purine-rich fish, like tuna and sardines, and concentrated protein powders or creatine supplements. And as a simple bonus tip, gentle hydration cycling can make a big difference in keeping creatinine levels stable over time. Choosing smarter proteins and reducing hidden kidney stressors will give your filtration system a better chance to recover. If this gave you relief, don't leave without subscribing to Know How. And type relief in the comments. So, I know it helped you today.